Hi, my name is Daughter McWhorter, and today is April the 4th, 2020. It has taken me about 20 plus years to finally have the courage to make this video. This is my second video that I've made. Um, my first video that I made about four years ago was when I saw Jesus with my own eyes in real life, bright daylight. I saw demons and I saw Satan. At the time, I was about six years old. I was a little girl. Years later, after me and my family came to the US, got married, had kids, this particular video that I'm making is going to be about my second vision. This happened about four years ago, like I mentioned. That particular day was like any other day. I spent time with my husband. I spent time with my kids. I do what I usually do on a daily basis. I cooked, I cleaned, watched TV with my husband and kids. Uh, we ate dinner. And like any other night, I prayed with my husband and we went to bed. Now, when I go to bed each night, I always have my Bible on the head of, uh, of my bed, on my pillow. And some nights I will read the Bible before I go to bed, right before we pray, me and my husband. And that particular night, I put my Bible on my bed, on my pillow, and I prayed with my husband and I went to bed. Now, as I went to bed in this vision that God revealed to me and showed it to me, and it's it's a vision, but it, it's in a dream, a vision in a dream. So I was at an amusement park. And if you know anything about amusement park, you have different rides and you have the rides, this foundation, metal foundations that hold each ride. So when people are riding the rides, they're not, they don't fall. So I was at an amusement park and I found myself sitting at the very front seat in the amusement, in, on, in one of the rides, the roller coaster, the one that does that. And I was at the very front and my husband was sitting next to me. And then within an instant, my husband wasn't there sitting next to me anymore. And I looked down, I didn't have any belt. Usually there's belt that secure you in each ride. So when the ride start, you don't fall. It's a safety, it's a safety belt. I didn't have any. So I said, if this ride start, I can fall off. And then just realizing that I didn't have any belt, out of nowhere, there was a belt protecting me. So after that ride, I was on another ride, the fairing wheel, the one that goes in a circle. It's really tall and it goes in a circle, run and run and run. But what was different about this particular ride was that I wasn't sitting in a seat. My hands was holding the seat and my body was outside of it. So basically I was hanging on the edge of the seat. And this ride was really, really tall. It was as tall as the eyes can see. It almost felt like it was touching the sky almost. And at that point, I realized that if this fairing wheel starts, if it starts and I'm not sitting in the seat and secure with a belt, when it starts to spin, I can, if I, you know, nothing is gonna save me. Nothing is gonna stop me from falling. So at that point, fear kicked in and I started panicking. The rice, the, this, then the rice started and it started spinning and spinning and spinning and I was holding on as hard as I could. And I felt my hand, my finger, I started letting go. And the moment I let go, I saw myself falling down, just, just like if you're falling from the top of a high building. I started falling down and within an instant I fell and I, I hit my head on one of the metal foundations that I mentioned earlier that supports each of the rides. And I was standing there and there were a lot of people surrounding my body. There was one lady that goes to my church. Now, the time that I had this vision, I, my husband and I and family, we lived in Lofkin, Texas. This particular lady, I know her, she's a close family member. She's, a, she's, a, she's like a family to me. And she's, she's a close family friend. 
I saw her standing there and I saw all the people surrounding my body. And I, and I hear that particular lady said, she's dead. So I'm standing there looking at my body in disbelief. I'm not dead. I'm, I'm right here. I'm right here. I'm not dead. But no one can hear me. No one can see me. So I tried to enter my body. But every time I tried to enter my body that was laying down on the ground, I couldn't. I couldn't. I tried. I couldn't. I tried with every might, with every power. I could not enter my own body. And um, it almost felt like there was an invisible wall separating me from entering my body. And no matter how hard I tried, I just simply couldn't. And then out of nowhere, all the right disappeared. Everyone surrounding my body was not there anymore. My body was not there anymore. It was just me standing there. And all around me was darkness, pitch black darkness. I mean, it was so dark that there was not, there was no light anywhere. It was just like all around me, I look up, it was darkness. I look on my right and left, it was darkness. I look in front of me, behind me, it was just pitch black. So black that you can't even, you can't see, you can't see your, you can't even see your own hand if it's standing right at your face. I couldn't see anything. It was so dark. And then fear kicked in. And it was the kind of fear that words cannot describe. This fear was so tremendous. It almost felt like the fear itself can kill me. It was like a second death. I was so afraid so terrified and the reason why i was afraid i knew that there's hell and there's heaven but here i am standing in the midst of darkness and there was nothing but hopelessness um think of all the negative emotion you can feel but all at once fear sadness hopelessness um like no, nothing can save you. Nothing can deliver you from this fear. It was crippling. And it was hell. It was the fear of hell. I didn't want to go to hell. I knew that when people die, you either go to heaven or you go to hell. And my fear was, I don't want to go to hell. And as I stand there, hopeless, not knowing what's going to happen to me next, in the distance, I saw this bright, light it was so bright in the midst of the darkness it was the only light that allowed me to see and it was jesus christ his face was so bright it there was so much light accumulating from his face he had a white garment on and the light reflecting from that garment was so bright it, it, it basically eliminated the darkness and as I looked at him, I was afraid. For without him speaking, it's like he was telling me, come, come here. But I, I was hesitant to come. And then he, he leaned his hand out. He leaned, he leaned his hand out to me, wanting me to come to him. And at that moment, in the midst of that darkness, I told myself, if I'm going to go with anyone, I'm going to go with him. I'm going to go with Jesus. With him, I will find safety. And the moment that I accept to go to him, my he was standing on my he was standing on my right side, and he leaned his left hand up to me, and my right hand was placed on top of his hand just like this. And at that moment, the fear went away, the hopelessness went away. The sadness went away. I was not afraid anymore. And remember I said I was hesitant to go to him. When he said, come here, I knew he was taking me to hell. I knew that's where he was taking me. It's like I knew it without him speaking. But I knew I was going to be okay if I am with him. So I placed my hand, like I mentioned, on top of his hand. And we were standing side by side. And we both looked forward. And as we looked forward, a door appeared in front of us. 
And that door opened. And inside of that door, which is darkness, it was dark, pitch, pitch black. But the light from Jesus club, the light from him, from his whole body, turned that door that opened inside of it, became light. It became clear. And within an instant, we were inside. Now, it looked like an elevator. Like So the door opened and we went inside and it looked like an elevator. And we were standing inside of it. And all around us was dark. Jesus was the only light. He was the only light in the midst of darkness. And I was not afraid because my hands are still in his hand. And then just like an elevator, it goes up and it goes down. It started going down. And it was going really, really fast. We were going really, really, really fast. And it almost felt like the elevator was going down a tunnel, like a tunnel leading in, in leading down to the to the middle of the earth or downward we were going down in a tunnel was just going down really 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 fast and the faster we were going i noticed something it started getting hotter and hotter and hotter like the deeper we go the faster we're going down into the earth the hotter it becomes and i had the complica comprehensions of the emotions, the feeling of what I was seeing, but I didn't, Jesus didn't let me feel any pain. I knew that I was supposed to be burning up. I knew that I was supposed to be feeling the heat, but I understood how hard it is. I understood how painful it's supposed to be as we're going lower, as it's getting hotter, but I didn't feel any pain because my hands was in the hands of Jesus. And I looked down at my feet, I saw my feet, I saw my leg, I saw my, my whole leg. I saw the skin, the skin on my leg, on my, I'm using my hand as an example. And I look at my leg and the skin was evaporating off of my, off of my leg. The muscle, the tissues, they were flying off of my leg, from my feet all the way up my leg. I can see my skin, my muscle, my tissue just flying off. That's how hot it was as we're going down. It was so hot. Literally, the tissues on my legs were flying off. I understood how tremendous painful that would be, how frightened that would be. He, Jesus allowed me to understand the severity of the, of the pain that I'm supposed to feel. He allowed me to understand how scary I supposed to, how scared I supposed to be seeing my own flesh, my own muscles, my own tissue fat, adipose tissue, all of it flying off of my bone and I can see it, but he allowed me to understand it, but he didn't allow me to feel the pain because when he called out, when he, when he looked at me at the beginning, when I say he looked at me and he said, come here. And I told you, I was hesitant to go to him because I knew I was going to hell. And what made me afraid was I didn't want to feel pain. If he's going to take me to hell, my fear was, I don't want to feel pain if I go to hell. So as long as my hands was in the hand of Jesus, I can see, I can understand the pain, I can see the fear, I can understand what that fear can do to you. It, it is, the, the, the physical body cannot be in hell. Only the spirit can, can be in hell. That's why I believe that I had to die in, in my vision. And I saw saw my skin flying off, my all of this, it was terrifying. It was pain. It, it, it felt like it's supposed to be extremely painful, terrifying, but I didn't feel the pain. I didn't feel the fear. I just had an understanding of it so I can tell people, so I can share it. Just going down to hell. You're not even there yet. What happens to you? And within an instant, we stopped literally in the lake of fire like it says in revelation the lake of fire it is real all around me was nothing but flame as as far as the eyes can see on my right on my left in front of me behind me on the top of my head we were surrounded by nothing but flame burning fire imagine going outside and rather than seeing the trees the leaves the glass houses, building people. Imagine all you see is, is nothing but fire all around you and you're literally standing in the middle of it. I understood how painful I had. You'll be cooking. You're, it's like when you stand in the midst of it, 
So you're basically, you're being cooked. But you feel every inch of that pain as you're being cooked, but you cannot die. You just feel the pain standing in the midst of that fire. I understood it all. But my hands was in the hand of Jesus, so I didn't feel any pain. I just had the understanding of it, the severity of how painful that would be. And then, I don't know, in, in, and, then, and then in the middle in the middle of that flame, this demon, I mean, giant demon, as tall as I can see it, really, really tall. I mean, it was a giant, really, really tall, 30 feet, 50 feet. I mean, really tall, giant demon. And it stood and it looked directly at me and Jesus. It had huge horn on each side of his head. His eyes were flaming. It was made out of fire. It was flaming. It was filled with hate and, and, and darkness and evil and nothing pure. And it looked at us, but it could not touch me. It couldn't touch me. It couldn't touch Jesus. It, 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 it walked away. It couldn't do anything to me. My hands was with Jesus. In the hands of Jesus. And then what I saw, I looked in the distance and I saw souls. They were being tormented. There were demons all around them. These demons had giant machetes, giant knives, and, and they will cut off their arms. They will cut off their, their left arm, their right arm, their leg, their feet. They will cut them into pieces. They were cutting them up, cutting them up. And after they cut up, their limbs will come back together only to be cut up all over again. Over and over and over and over, they were being commented nonstop. And then I look at, and then I saw another group. It was women. And these women, they were a giant snake, giant serpent. And it will go through the vaginal canal and it will come out through their mouth and it will rip them, rip them, ripping them apart. And they will come back together only to suffer over and over and over again. And and it's like without me speaking, it's like I asked Jesus, why, why this torment? And he said, without, opening, without saying a single word, he answered me and said, this woman committed adultery when they were on earth. And then, and then there, were, there were long line, long line of souls. They were just, just, they were all in line, side by side, side by side. And they were chained chained their feet were chained their homes were chained and they're just standing there and and without me even asking these souls were people on earth who have not repented who have not accepted jesus as their lord and savior who who doesn't who don't know god or they know god but they don't accept god they don't accept the son of god into their heart and if they don't repent if they don't accept jesus if they don't if they don't believe that Jesus is the Son of God. He's the truth. He's the light. He's the way. No one can go into the kingdom of God without without accepting Jesus. You you he is, he, imagine it, it, it. Jesus is is a key. If there's a door and you want to get into that door, you need a key to open it. Now imagine if this door cannot be penetrated, cannot be broken down by anything, nothing, except only one key. That's how it is to being to go to heaven to to be to be saved. You have to have that key to open that door. Jesus is that key. Without him, you can never enter. Without him, you can never be saved. Jesus is the son of God. He is our savior. He, he is our salvation. He is the truth, the light, the way, and there's no other way. These people, this soul that I saw, have not yet accepted Christ. They were, and if they don't, they will be, their soul is like they're waiting to go to hell unless they accept Christ. And I saw that. And then out of nowhere, Jesus took me to this area in hell. It, it was like a long prison. Like when you go into a prison, there are cells, cells after cells. It was long, different, different cells. And then one of the cell opened and we enter into it. And it looked like an operating room, like a surgical operating room. And they had an operating table in the middle of that cell. There was this white man laying on top of that operating table. And there was this demon, this giant demon, standing above him. This man was striped down, like his arm and leg was striped down. And he, and he was laying, he was laying, laying on that table. And this demon had crawled, like long, 
start crawl and he took his hand and he went into his chest like this and he ripped his heart out and he went into his ribcage and he ripped it was ripping him apart ripping his organs out his lungs his heart it was ripping him apart and this man was screaming agonizing pain as he's being ripped apart and and Without me even asking Jesus, he knew what the question I was going to ask. Why is this man going through this torment? And without Jesus saying a single word, he replied and he said, when this man was on earth, he saw human organs. He saw human organs for money, for profit. When he died, what he did to other people on earth is being done to him in hell. For it, forever and ever, he will be tormented. His, his torment is nonstop. There's no ending to it. There's, in hell, time don't exist. It's every the pain that he goes through is eternal. He will be ripped apart over and over and over. But he did that to people when he was on earth. Now, the next thing that God showed me is to in my opinion, I feel that this was God letting me know that this what I'm showing you is real. You're not dreaming. This is a vision I'm showing you. And I feel that Jesus showed me this next this next scene, vision, because to remind me that what I saw was true, is real, and I have to share it with people that I meet, specifically with the church. Pastors need to preach about hell. Pastors need to share with their congregation about hell. They need to minister on hell, the reality of hell. It is real. So I went to the next cell. And I, I saw my husband in that cell. See, when you're married, you don't know everything about your partner. No matter whether you've been married for one year, one day, 50 years, 60 years, you never, no one knows everything about anyone. Only God do. I don't know what my husband's greatest fear is. And I feel that God showed this to me to confirm that everything that I saw is real. I didn't know what my husband's fear is. After what God showed me when I woke up from my from my from my sleep, my husband confirmed to me that his greatest fear is is surgery, is is blood, is anything surgical, anything from an operating room to organs to blood to anything surgical. That is his greatest fear. He's afraid of anything surgery. He's afraid of an operating room. He's he's even afraid when doctors put on the surgical. Uh, clothing before surgery. He's afraid of anything related to surgery. He is afraid of it. He's terrified of it. That is my husband's greatest fear. I didn't know this until God showed me this vision. And this is important for me to share this because in the next cell, my husband was on an operating table and himself was ripping him, his own self apart. He was ripping himself apart. So my husband was laying down and my husband was standing on top of himself, ripping himself apart. His greatest fear became his reality in hell. And I saw him. And then I woke up. And when I woke up, the first thing I said was, he let me come back. He let me come back. Jesus didn't leave me in hell. He didn't leave me there. He allowed me to wake up so I can share this with everyone who will listen. And the first thing I did, I, I took my Bible. I have my Bible right here. I, I took my Bible. I had it to my chest. And I started praying. Now, I knew God since I was a little girl. My mom, she's a strong Christian. She's a God-fearing woman. And every day I am thankful that she made sure that we went to church. She made sure we prayed. She made sure we knew God. And I thank God every day that my mom introduced me to God at such a young age. So I always have my Bible with me. So I prayed. And even though I was born again, I was, you know, I was baptized already. I've accepted Christ into my heart. I felt like I needed to do it again. So I took my Bible. I got on my knees when I woke up. And I re I basically confessed my sin again. And I asked God to forgive me of all that I've done wrong. And I re-accepted Christ into my heart. And then I realized that my whole body was covered in sweat. It's almost as if someone took a bucket of water and poured on me. The side of the bed that I was laying was completely wet. It's like someone poured water only on my side of the bed. And my husband woke up and he asked me, daughter, what happened? What's going on? And I shared what I saw with him. 
And then that's when, like I mentioned, he told me what his greatest fear is. And at that point, I told my husband, I don't know what you're doing wrong, but whatever it is, you need to, you need to repent. Like my husband, he's a Christian, but being a Christian doesn't mean you know God. Being born again doesn't mean you really are born again. You can confess your sin. You can accept Christ into your heart. But if you're not living a Christ-like life, if you're not keeping the commandment of God, if you're not living your life to honor God, not to honor yourself, not to honor anyone, not to, not to get praise or reward from anyone, but truly to honor God, to serve God with all your heart, to live every day, every second, pleasing to God, then you're not really born again. So I asked my husband, whatever you're doing, I saw you in hell. And it's a warning. You need to pray to God. You need to repent of your sin and ask God into your heart. And my husband, we prayed together. And, um, you know, one of the things he told me later on was that he didn't really believe. He didn't really have faith. And that may have been the reason why I saw him in hell. So we prayed. He repented. And he told me what his fear was, which is the fear of anything surgery related. And I didn't know that. And him telling me what his fear was confirmed what I saw in him. And that was one of the little gifts that Jesus gave me. So I don't have doubt. So I don't think that it was just a dream. So I know 100% this is a vision that God allowed me to see through Jesus Christ. Jesus showed me hell. So I can share with the wall, so I can share with anyone who have ears to listen that hell is real, demons are real, Satan is real, and heaven is real. And to God be the glory, we don't have to go to hell. We don't have to be tormented day and night. Day and night doesn't even exist. We don't have to be tormented for eternal, eternal torment in hell. There's, there's a way out, and it's through Jesus Christ. He is the truth. He is the key that will open that door. That door is the kingdom of God. He is the only key that can open that door. Jesus, he is the son of God. He came to this world, and he became sin, so our sin can be forgiven. He lay his life. He was crucified on the cross. He resurrected on the third day. In him we have saved. In him we have salvation. In him we have life. In him our names are in the book of life. But we have to accept him into our heart. We have to believe that Jesus is the son of God. We have to confess our sin. We have to repent. We have to accept him into our heart. And believe that he is the son of God. And he's coming again. He is coming again. In the Bible, it says no one knows the time or the hour that he's going to come. He's going to come like a thief. And if a thief is coming to steal from you, they don't tell you that they're going to come steal from you. That is why it is crucial that every second you have, every moment you have, every breath you take, let it be to glorify God. If you don't know Jesus, I am pleading with you. Please, please, this moment, take this time, get on your knees and pray to God. Tell him that you are a sinner. Tell him that you're wrong. Tell him that, Lord, I want you to come be part of my life. Confess your sin. Say, tell God, Jesus, you're the son of God. I accept you into my heart. I want to live my life walking with you. I want to carry the cross and walk with you. Confess your sin. Accept Christ into your heart and live a life pleasing to God. Because one day he's coming again. I've seen hell. It is real. It is real like the trees that I'm looking at right now. It is real like this Bible that I'm holding. It is real like this hair on my head. It's real as the skin as the skin that I touch on my face. It is real. Hell is real and heaven is real. But Jesus died and he paid the price so we don't have to go to hell. So we can be with him. You don't have to buy salvation. Salvation doesn't cost anything. You don't have to be rich. To be to, to accept Christ, you don't have you. It doesn't matter whether you're rich, whether you're poor, whether you're black, whether you're white, whether you're brown, whether you're yellow. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what language you speak. It doesn't matter what your status is. It doesn't matter whether you're healthy or sick. It does not matter. It doesn't matter. Jesus paid that price for all of us. We're all children of God. No matter what continent you live in, no matter who you are, 
God loves every one of us. He made us all in his own image. All we have to do is confess, accept Christ into our heart. Love God. Keep his word. Live a godly life, a Christ-like life. It's priceless. Accepting Jesus is priceless. You just have to believe and have faith and live life glorifying God. My prayer is that anyone watching this video, I pray that you allow God to come into your life. You accept Jesus into your heart. You believe that hell is real and that we'll either go to heaven or hell, one way or the other. There's no in between. And one day the Son of God is coming again. And I ask any pastors watching this video, please, 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 please. It's important to minister, to preach about hell. It is very important. Jesus showed it to me. And the, the main thing that I know in my heart God wanted me to do is to share with his church, with, with pastors, specifically pastors. If you are not preaching about hell, you need to stop preaching about hell. You have to preach about the whole Bible, not just some of it, not just half of it, not just 70% of it or 80% of it or 99% of it, but 100% of what is in the word of God. You have to preach about all of it, including hell. People need to know that hell is real. It's a real place. And the, the church, some will either go there and some will either go to heaven. And you don't want to be that pastor who don't want to preach about hell because you're afraid that that people will leave the church, that people will not come. It's not up to you to make that decision. You have to preach about hell in your congregation. You'll be liable for it. If you do not, God will hold you accountable. Please, people have to know about hell. I am going to, I have, I have written down both, all the vision that I've seen. I've written it down and I hope to turn it into a book so that everyone can have it. And here in front of me, I have Bible verses, seven pages long, that talks about the reality of hell in the Bible. And I'm going to mention some of them right now. If you have a pen and paper, please write them, write them down. I wrote down John 3, 16 verses, 16 to 18. This is one of my favorite verses in the Bible. I love John 3, 16. So please write it down, read about it. It, it basically tells you that God love, God love all of us, that he sent his only begotten son to come and he died for us. You know, he, he, he laid his life down he sacrificed his son. That's how much God loves us. So we don't have to die eternal death. So we may live forever with him one day. So read John 3, 16, verse 16 through 18. The next verse, read Romans chapter 6, verse 23. Revelation 20, verse 15. Revela Revelation 21, chapter 21, verses 8. Isaiah chapter 66, Verses 22 to 24. Daniel chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Matthew chapter 18, verse 6 through 9. Matthew chapter 25, verse 31 to 46. Mark chapter 9, verse, 40, uh, verse 42 to 48. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 5 through 10. Revelation, chapter 14, verses 9 through 11. Revelation, chapter 20, verses 14 to 15. Matthew, chapter 5, verse 29. Matthew, chapter 10, verse 28. Mark, chapter 9, verse 43 to 48. Matthew, chapter 3, verse 50. Psalm 145, verse 20. Matthew chapter 5, verse 22. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26 to 31. Luke chapter 16, verse 19 through 31. Luke chapter 5, Luke chapter 12, verse, verse 5. Matthew 25, verse 41. Read those Bible verses. It's in the Bible. Read them. Pray.
pray for God to open your heart to understand what those Bible verses mean. And I pray that it will help you understand that hell is real, heaven is real, Jesus is real, demons and Satan, they are real. And we need to accept Christ into our heart and believe that Jesus is the Son of God and that one day he's coming again. Um, I pray that this video has been helpful. I pray that this video will touch your heart to believe that hell is real, to believe that Jesus is the Son of God, and to just know how wonderful God is, how much He loves us, how much He cares about us, the price He paid so we don't have to die eternal death, so we don't have to go to hell, so we can live in, in, in we can live with Him one day. So I pray that this have helped. And I pray that those who don't know God, those who don't know Jesus, you can get to know him. You can have a relationship with him. You can accept it into your heart. I pray that this video can save many people. Because I don't want anyone to go to hell. God don't want anyone to go to hell. That's why he sent Jesus to die on the cross for all of us. So um, I'm just going to pray with um, with anyone watching this video. Now just bow your head with me. I'm just going to pray before I end this video. Father, in the name of Jesus. God, I pray to you right now with anyone watching this video for them to know that you love us. You love us so much that you send your only son. He laid down his life on the cross. He was risen on the third day. He defeated death. He defeated hell. He defeated demons. He defeated Satan. In him, we are saved. In him, we have life. In him, we have salvation. In him, our names are in the book of life. God, I pray that anyone watching this video, they will hear it. They will repent. They will accept you into their heart. My God, I pray that it's not from what I am just saying, but that you will give them wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to seek after you, to read your holy words themselves. You will give them clarity. You will give them understanding. You will let them know that you love them, Lord. I pray, God, that people, that what I'm saying, Lord, that you will open their heart, their eyes, their ears to hear what I'm saying, their heart to feel what I'm saying, to believe it, Lord. This is what you showed me. I believe with all my heart. My God, I pray that you will reach out to everyone hearing this that they will feel your presence they will feel your love they will know that god you are real and that you love us father i pray that your love your grace your mercy will continue to extend to all of us lord thank you god for loving us thank you for your love thank you for your grace thank you for your mercy thank you so much for jesus thank you so much thank you father i pray this in the name of jesus amen amen all right, thank you.